Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. These famous words of Martin Luther occurred at the Diet of Worms before the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire in defense of the ideas um, were, that were brought forth by the 95 Theses in his essays and books that he had published afterwards. And so this book here, Here I Stand, A Life of Martin Luther by Roland H. Baton, is one that exquisitely details Martin Luther's life right before, during, and after the main events of the Reformation in 1517. Now, this book, as you can see, is a rather large, thick book. It has 400 pages, and so I cannot detail the whole book. So I will give you guys three highlights to it for which I thought made the book worth reading. So the first highlight is towards the beginning of the book, where it details Luther's first mass as an ordained priest. And here, he is utterly terrified to consecrate the elements for communion to that turn the bread and wine into the body and blood. And you know, Luther is absolutely terrified by this. And he says about the whole ordeal that, you know, he doesn't feel worthy to be able to do this. He is just an utter worm. Angels attend to God. How can he stand before God and consecrate the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ? And this really this, Luther's sheer terror at this really shows that he was genuine and thoughtful about what he was doing in his faith. He didn't simply recite the words as, as if it was another day in the office or just another mantra or chant. He really cared about what he was doing and he wanted to do it right because he, he was dealing with holy business. And so for me, this first chunk in the very beginning of the book really highlights that you know, Luther, in the actions that he took to make the Reformation happen, he did them out of love for God and for love's people and for the faith, and not simple out of spite and um, personal pride. The second highlight is probably my favorite, and it was the reason that I was given this book to read by my grandfather, and that is the famous Here I Stand quote that I mentioned earlier. Now, in the past, um, I have come under attack verbally from... Um, different folks in regards to my faith. And so my grandfather, he gave me this book to encourage me, you know, to see what Martin Luther went through and that he went through a whole lot worse and that if he went through it, I could too. And so when I finally got to this part um, where he said that line on page 182, you know, I felt as if I was in the room with Luther. And so I will read it here to you. Since then, your majesty and your lordships desire a simple reply, I will answer without horns and without teeth. Unless I am convicted by scripture and plain reason, I do not accept the authority of popes and councils, for they have contradicted each other. My conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and I will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. God help me. Amen. Now, Baton goes on to add, the earliest printed version adds the words, here I stand, I cannot do otherwise. The words, though not recorded on the spot, may nevertheless be genuine because the listeners at that moment may have been too moved to write. This really speaks to the genuineness of Luther that I mentioned earlier and really shows that Luther truly believed in what he was doing with, Reform with the Reformation and he would not back down from it. Now, the last highlight I'd like to share with you is about Luther and his family, specifically with his daughter and her death. And the first time I read it, I cried because it was just really sad and really showed Luther's humanity. And so his daughter, Magdalena, she got very sick at the age of 14 and was on her deathbed. And here it says on page 312, Luther prayed, Oh God, I love her so, but thy will be done. And turning to her, Magdalene, my little girl, would you like you would like to stay with your father here, and you would be glad to go to your father in heaven? And she said, Yes, dear father, as God wills. And Luther reproached himself because God had blessed him as no bishop had been blessed in a thousand years, and yet he could not find it in his heart to give God thanks. Katie stood off, overcome by grief, and Luther held the child in his arms as she passed on. 
When she was laid away, he said, Du Lubis Lynchen, you will rise and shine like the stars in the sun. How strange it is to know that she is at peace and all is well, and yet to be so sorrowful. This really shows that Luther, as we view him as a giant in history, he started the Reformation, changed the world, had many moments that he was far from that. He was very small and a very distraught man, brought low by such tragic things as the death of his 14-year-old daughter. And so these are but a few awesome highlights from Roland Baton's Here I Stand, A Life of Martin Luther, and I hope you give it a read. If you're looking to learn more about Luther and the Reformation, this is certainly not a bad place to start. It is quite the academic book. It has 13 and a half pages of citations alone, so you will no doubt find this book to be excellent and an accurate retelling of Luther and the event of the Reformation.